uh, 4 gigahertz at 500 megahertz on front side bus. And why I like the 500 megahertz in front side bus versus 450? Because the higher the front side bus, uh, the higher frequency on front side bus, the more data you're pushing over that frequency. Means the higher the signaling is. So, as by my benchmarking, I'm you know I'm benchmarking already five years and putting down my stats already six years on the paper, and by those benchmarking I saw uh, the cases when front side bus is higher and the frequency is the same but f uh, of the CPU core uh, internal core is the same but front side bus is higher it's going to give you two up to four percent of the overclocking performance. It's going to give you more performance, up to 2 to 4 percent. It's going to give you a little bit faster computer. So that's why I like to keep front side bus as, as, as high as possible. And here's my front side bus. Alright, so here's our little tutorial. And don't worry about those... Um, and I also suggest you bump a notch if you have the clock uh, amplitude control bump uh, one step up on micro voltage and if you have the CPU clock skew control bump this up on a one step up as well so um, as again if, and the voltage if you don't have those GTL voltages if you don't have the North Bridge GTL reference voltage if you only have the North Bridge voltage and uh, if you have um, CPU uh, V core and nothing else, you don't have the PLL and you don't have the VTT, just um, don't worry about them. It's not necessary to have them. You can still have a decent like 3.8, 3.6 overclock without them. And also I suggest you on VTT to make it one step up, one two point was the default and I just make one step up which is one point two seventy five and on PLL voltage one step up as well and now I'm gonna click F10 and click Y and enter and it's gonna save it's gonna save those uh, setting for me and it's going to be 4 gigahertz or 4000 megahertz uh, of external frequency and 500 front side bus internal frequency for the CPU as you can see 3.98 it's without 2 megahertz 4 gigahertz and the 2 megahertz or 5 megahertz is going to jump up and down up and down it's okay it just does little frequency that jumping so it's gonna save it and we're gonna put in and we just discussed how to get our safe um, and the best overclocking today in our um, socket 7075 or socket T overclocking 102 um, video tutorial by Alexander Moroz or Moroz Academy. So you learn basics and now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Windows operating system. I'm gonna tell you what kind of software you need to download to verify the stability to check the temperature while you're running the windows and stuff like this and don't remember don't forget every time you overclock by 200 megahertz watch watch your temperature and as you can see my temperature is not that high but make sure that your temperature in the bias not higher than 70 uh, degrees celsius if it's going to be higher than 70 degrees celsius means that you need to stop overclocking uh, and lower your overclock speeds a little bit lower and lower your voltage just a little bit alright well we discussed on how to tweak your bias and I give you the basics informations about the overclocking your bias and if your computer gonna hang um, or freeze up uh, during the bias uh, you need to and in computer not gonna boost uh, not gonna post I'm sorry you need to shut it down um, 
disconnect the power, open your case, get inside of your motherboard, read your uh, manual of your motherboard uh, on instruction how to clear your CMOS. It's a little bridge uh, that you need to connect and disconnect to clear your CMOS physically. On some motherboards like N4 6800 and N4 7, uh, 70, uh, 780 um, or 680 um, to clear your CMOS all that you gotta do you need to um, put in your computer um, and uh, hold the insert button it's gonna clear the CMOS for you but also it sometimes it doesn't work in some cases and you need to go and physically declare the CMOS alright so I'm gonna uh, just probably gonna say we discussed pretty much the bias today and how to overclock the bias I give you the basics on the bias I gave you all the information I give you all the information that you need and it's going to be in your bias if your motherboard uh, can uh, handle the overclocks anyhow and if it's built by the ASUS MSI um, uh, DFI um, Foxconn or EVGA Gigabyte it's it's going to handle the overclocks if your computer from Dell HP Gateway um, I'm suggesting you uh, to hold on that because I'm not suggesting you to overclock uh, from those com Acer from those companies just hold on your overclock it's, you're not gonna overclock because they're using the bad biases the cheap crap motherboards and this is just a suggestion all right now we're gonna go to uh, windows and we're gonna discuss what kind of software you need to test the stability what kind of software you need to monitor your frequencies what kind of software you need to monitor your temperature while you in the windows well thank you so much my name is alexander moroz and this video tutorial is um, a socket 7075 um, 102 overclocking tutorial um, by Alexander Moroz or by Moroz Academy. Thank you so much. You can find this tutorial on the YouTube channel or please visit uh, morozacademy.com. Bye bye now and let's go to the windows now.